Support for today's episode comes from Foria Wellness. It's cold outside, cozy, sexy, cool, and it's tis the season to get close. Uh, Foria's intimacy oil, <laughs> boonie approved because it enhances connection and pleasure for a perfect night in. This is your last chance to use the code Booney. Booney, all capital letters, to save on your purchase, all right? So head on over to foriawellness.com. Details on how to purchase can be found in the show notes and on the booneybreakdown.com. Hey, y'all, it's your girl, Booney, and you're listening to the Booney Breakdown Podcast, your source for all things responsible and ratchet. All right, this is it. This is our last episode of 2022. We have our responsible fave is here. We have KG is on for our annual favorite albums of the year episode. Now I'm already going to put a caveat because we recorded this before this weekend's um, important court news. (laughs) But KG makes a very controversial pick. I'm sure it will be controversial now. But you're going to want to stick around. We talk about our favorite music moments, our favorite songs, and like I said, our favorite albums of the year. So stick around for that conversation. We're going to hop right into my pick of the week. And the pick of the week, (laughs) I hope you've melted in your couch already and you've at least started the Best Man final chapters. It was so, 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 so good. Um, I know they said this is it. It's a limited series. This is it. This is that. We, we'll never see these characters again. But I hope they're absolutely wrong because I really, 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 really enjoyed sitting with these characters for a little bit longer than we've ever had them in the movies. Um, I'm not going to do any spoilers. But what I will say is Harper Stewart ain't shit. He ain't never been shit since the first time we met him. And 20 years later, he still ain't shit. Um... Why the fuck is Morris Chestnut so fucking fine? Like, it doesn't even make sense for a man to be that goddamn fine. I also want to say black don't motherfucking crack. Because I think all of them, when I looked it up, they're all over 50. Um, Munch, a merch. Is it merch or munch? Merch. (laughs) He is the oldest. Like, he's about to be 60. All of the women are 50, 51, 55, and they look amazing. The titties. The titties were sitting the whole throughout the whole show. All of them had the titties sitting. Um, but very well done. I liked how they connected us to the second movie, which, by the way, I have never watched again. I know some people consider it a holiday movie. It's not on my holiday movie list. I saw it once in the movies and never watched the movie again, but I do like it. Um, so, yeah, I just thought it was so good. Are we starting a petition? How can we start a petition for them to give us a season two? Fuck that limited series bullshit. I'm ready for them to come back. I think they could sustain a couple more seasons of it. If Sex and the City can come back, then I think (laughs) and rebrand, I think the best man can do a rebrand and come back as well. So if you have not checked it out on Peacock, you'll really, really enjoy it. Housekeeping. Housekeeping. Come back later, please. Housekeeping? Not now. All right. We're going to do uh, some feedback from episode 230. Uh, <laughs> unforgettable dick with Sheika. Um, so many of you said, Booney, this was just so funny. I saw a tweet from Chris. Shout out to Chris. She said, listening to Sheika on the episode has me hysterical at work. These are my favorite episodes. I swear y'all are funny. So if you just want a quick, funny, light laugh. Um, with our girl Shika, go back to listen to last week's episode, Unforgettable Dick. <laughs> Some of y'all were also funny and talked to Booney Tuesday because when I was asking about what makes a dick forgettable, right? And somebody was just like, all average dick is is forgettable. And I think that is true because as I said on, if you don't follow me on Instagram, Like I said, I'm like, you remember all the bad dick and you remember all the bomb dick. But all that average, it got me through dick. You don't remember. So (laughs) check out last week's episode 230 with our homie Shika. All right. Just letting you all know, um, you know, I'm putting this episode out the week of Christmas is the last episode of 2022. So what I am going to do, I am taking a week off next week. So there will be no new episode. We're going to run back an old episode next week. Um, so yes, I'm taking a little pause a week off next week. 
Um, some of y'all were like, you could have did it this week. No, nah, because this episode has to drop. It's the last episode always of the year. So, um, but next week, no new episodes. So don't fret there. And uh, if you're not following us on social media, I don't know why yet. Um, you can follow us on <laughs> Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, TikTok at the Booney Breakdown. You can follow us on Twitter just at Booney Breakdown. You know what to do. You know how to put this, especially this episode. Go ahead and put it in your group chat. Have some discussion around some good music. Um, you know what the talk to Booney Tuesday questions will be this week. So just head on over again. Follow us on Instagram at the Booney Breakdown. That's where we're most active. Thank you guys so much for all of the support, shares. Uh, ticket purchases, merch purchases for um, 2022. We will be back uh, next year. We'll hit the road again next year for some shows. You know, maybe some new merch and all of that great stuff. But again, if any way you support it, whether it was putting a link in a group chat, putting something in your Insta story, like I said, buying tickets, buying merch, being a part of the Patreon gang, Support is always, always greatly appreciated. And thank you for rocking with me for 2022. Here's to 2023. So I'm going to shut the fuck up now. And uh, we're going to get into this last episode of the year. All right. We're here. This is the last episode of 2022. And what do we do always? We have our responsible fave on to chat about music because I swear he should do like a music politics podcast, but he'll never do it, even though I tell him he should. So Because one, no one would listen. Two, I would never tell anyone that I had a podcast. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the only, the most that I had thought about doing is like, recording thoughts for my kids later um but i don't think i mean i guess they could want to hear about like you know omnibus politics and and passing spending bills in 2022 they might want to hear about this in 2035 who knows but i doubt it (laughs) oh hush (laughs) but i'm going to start this episode out finally I can say Rihanna gave us fucking music. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, It counts. Okay. She's probably going to get an Oscar nomination out of it. I'm sure she'll be nominated for best original song. So, all right. So the song works. It only works in the the, music. Let me take this back. It yes, didn't work I, when it first came out. It, it did not. Out. For I listened to it like, okay, it'll probably work in the movie. Saw the movie. As soon as I saw the scene setting up, I'm like, oh God, they're about to play it. <laughs> and it worked beautifully in the movie. Just like we all said it would. Well, not everybody, because some people out. just hated it. I was stunned. I had to go to Tucson, Arizona for a work trip. I normally don't listen to regular radio in the car. And on this trip, we're in the rental car and my coworker had the radio on and they were playing it on the radio. Yeah. This is a yeah white guy. Right. And he's singing it like he's like, God, this song is so beautiful. <laughs> and I'm like, so, wow. Yeah. I mean, so obviously, I mean, when I'm driving around the kids, like I'm I try to be selective with like what I'm playing. So a lot of the times it's like hits one on serious where it's just like you know, top pop hits or whatever. Um, and they play that song a lot. So like Malcolm knows the song now, so, oh. you know? So, I, I mean, I guess because of me hearing it regularly, I, I enjoy, um, I enjoy the song now for what it is, Yeah, uh, but I, mean, I don't, I don't want no more of that. No, That's I'm a hundred percent. It worked. I think, I see I see the press machine working for a comeback, right? Like yeah. she dropped two singles and I get why they couldn't drop the first song, the second song before the movie came out because it would have gave away yeah, that yeah. part at the end. So I understand why they didn't drop that one. Um, she already got a Golden Globe nomination for the song, Her and Thames. 
And when I read, I, when I saw that, I was like, okay, well, she's going to get an Oscar nomination, but I'm joking. Um, but she is on the short list for an Oscar nomination. I just Googled it on Deadline, did an article. So apparently it's on the short list for Best Original Songs. Um, so, you know me as a Navy member, I like to taunt sometimes the Hive because they always try to downplay Rihanna's musical success. Mm-hmm which I would argue she's more successful than Beyonce when you look at track sales, et cetera, et cetera. That's just facts. Um, She could get a fucking Oscar before Beyonce, and I would love that to happen. (laughs) I mean, yeah, I don't. What? But hold on. Didn't Beyonce do that whole, she didn't get nothing for that with. um... She she didn't win for the Will Smith movie and she didn't win for dream girls either. No, the black joint that she just did. The um, what was that? Um, that black movie. No, the Lion King. Didn't she do something for that? She yeah, but that? she hasn't won an Oscar. Dang, okay. she's been okay. nominated, I believe, but she hasn't okay. won an Oscar. Okay, okay, gotcha. Um, okay. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't want to hear it because um, you're gonna you're gonna yell that consistently so because <laughs> i'm going to always say <laughs> academy award winner <laughs> right but like it's gonna i be... was just i'm just glad she didn't let me down again this year so you could talk me and say we didn't get no music but i'm with you i want to hear ass shaking titty shaking music next i don't want none of this uplift shit fuck all that shit it was cool for what it was but i see the machine okay she dropped songs for the hottest one of the hottest movies of the year now in a couple weeks we'll have her at the super bowl maybe there's yes. rumors that she's touring this summer so maybe music is coming yeah. maybe she will follow beyonce in that regard and drop a song right for the super bowl while she is an audience and then it's definitely music. it's definitely it's definitely something coming out for the super bowl and it's going to be stadium right. yeah they said she's going to do a stadium tour this will be her first stadium tour she's only done arena so you know I'll be there. <laughs> I cannot afford. And <laughs> you know, before we get into it, I I had to speak on this on Instagram. I don't know who the fuck these celebrities think we are. Why are y'all dropping tour surprise tour announcements? Like to- these tours these days to go see an artist. Plan. Yeah, like to go see an artist where I don't even get a chair. The ticket is a hundred dollars. So to have a seat, they're like two fifty and up, and then nine hundred dollars in fees. Yeah, and the problem is, is like if you don't buy it when they come out, the box is going to get them, and then you paying. Well, I'm not paying, but you you paying (laughs) an additional two hundred dollars on top of it, and it's just like no, I I can't, I can't do it. Um, So it's like y'all have to give us time to plan. You can't say on Tuesday. T- pre-sale is tomorrow and tickets go on sale generally on Friday and the cheapest ticket is $250. Fuck y'all. Like, yeah. I really don't know who these celebrities think we are. Like, we're broke. Y'all got money. We don't got it. So I would like two weeks notice, at least a paychecks notice to say, all right, I may not pay the gas bill. I'm going to get these tickets and I'm going to work it out on the back end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. Um, yeah, it, it like, who was it? Jill just Jill came out. She's I got those her, her though. Tour. I did get Jill. I, but here's the thing. I, I mean, love her. Love the album. I've seen her. I don't know how many times, and I know you've seen her a lot. I just could not pay two fifty. I, I, I couldn't. I, I couldn't do it. It's it's a short list for me of people who I'm willing to pay for. Right. So. Because I was excited about that tour when it was supposed to happen before COVID, that's why I was like, all right, I'm just going to do it. Yeah. Um, I was sad about Janet. I wanted to do Janet, but Janet did not come at the right time. And then I forgot about the sale. And like you said, the tickets were gone. Mm-hmm. I'm not paying resale value. I, Janet wow. is a great show. I haven't seen Janet a lot. I think I've seen Janet twice. But I would have loved to have gone to see her. Um, But it's just like all these tours, I just don't... It was just like, bam, bam, bam that week. It was like a new edition. Um, I missed out on Ari Lennox. Even when she kept adding shows, I just yeah. could not get those tickets. And now she's saying this is her last tour. But she's so emotional. She always be saying this shit on Twitter. Yeah, because I, I thought she was done with the business 
at uh, <laughs> in a, at a hole, and then she dropped the whole album. So again, I don't I don't know these. Again, it, it's money, it's cash, and uh, yeah, I so guess because they ain't making money off of albums, they gotta they gotta rake it in off of sales. And and they ticket definitely are. Taken. Yeah, ticket master's ticket taking ticket master, a percentage. I that's what's killing me. I want to go buy tickets to something else, not even a concert. I think it was just a show, and the ticket itself was reasonable one twenty five. Mm-hmm. But then when I went to go check out, it said two oh six, and I'm like, wait, yeah, <laughs> how did the ticket price almost double in fees? Who are the fees going to? It feel like them, you know, when you ever look at like your um cell phone bill, be like nine one one recovery fee, this this tax. I'm like, well, what are they, what are these fees? I need a full breakdown and accounting of why I'm paying another hundred and twenty dollars in fees. Yeah, it's. I mean, it, it's it's rough um, to one be able to try to try to do these entertainment things, um, but you got to pay the five, and I just can't do it. I mean, again, you know, we look back on it. I mean, I feel like we uh, we again have to uh, blame Obama um, for all these Ooh. things. But I, you know, I'm not going to get into politics. Don't blame Black folk <laughs> Jesus now. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not oh. gonna. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't know where we go from here because yeah, the days of going for me 10 plus concerts a year, that's done if these are the prices. So now I'm nervous because I'm like, well, who else is gonna come out? I mean, I'm sure we'll get to this at some point, you know, Beyonce Rihanna. And I'm this time I'm willing to drop a bag on Rihanna because I'm willing to drop a bag. So yeah. <laughs> um yeah, because the first time I saw, I think my ticket was like a while ago. Then I had free tickets, and then I did the an- not yeah anti world tour, and mm-hmm, yeah, yeah, those were pretty decent. Um, they weren't expensive, but I told I already told Sheikah, bitch, clear the Amex because next time we, <laughs> I want to be yeah, in the, I want to be in that pl- what are them tickets that be like on t- platinum. I want one of them tickets, <laughs> so I'm sure it'll have a comma in it. Um. All right. So how do you want to you want to hop right into this? We're gonna go Wait. through. Do you want to do your your favorite song of the year? How do you want to do hey, this? You, listen? Let's let's set this up already because we do this disclaimer every year. We're not saying these are the best. We're not mm-hmm. saying these are the top. We're not saying these are the most selling albums or music of the year. We're just saying these are our personal favorites of the year. And that is how we move forward with this. But we welcome discussion, critique. Maybe you could say, oh, my God, this wasn't your favorite. But we're not saying they're the best. No, we're just saying that is. is the caveat here. <laughs> Don't um, get so mad gonna... at me. <laughs> you always know KG always throws a a left hook in here, teaches us something you know, I new. Don't, I, don't, I don't even think I have nothing crazy this year. We'll see. You I always say so. that. And then they'll be like, <laughs> who is that? I've never heard Who's of that. that? Um, um, so last year you threw the caveat of a top music moment. Do you have one? Cause I came prepared this time. Cause you, you threw me for a loop last time on that. Go ahead. Go ahead. Share yours. Okay. <laughs> so my top music moment, um, of the year, I think this was probably the last verses that ever happened. I hope versus stays dead. It, right. it had I'll a run. Out. Damn. I God, forgot, they, about <laughs> forgot they even existed now. Right. So verses are dead. <laughs> But I got to shout out the Marion Mario versus because that gave laughter for weeks to come after that. Um, you had the Ray, the pre-show versus Ray J. Oh, uh, Ray J Wish. came out. Yes. Yes. You had Bobby Valentino and them making a song. Ray J holding a baby to my baby is born. And then you had and I just want to talk my shit again because I went with the home team. I knew Mario was going to dust on Marion, but I did not know it was going to be a knockout like that. And just the clips of that alone, Omarion could not sing. Jeremiah comes out and he's telling y'all niggas sound like shit. Like it was just a really hilarious night. And um, never sleep on niggas in Baltimore. All right. That was my top moment. And it's amazing how for two years versus was such a critical culture point. And now you even forgot it existed. It just died. Yeah, I, I really, I completely <laughs> forgot. I don't like. I've completely forgot about that whole like pandemic period of music between D Nice and people spending on on live every damn day. Like I've completely, I've completely Let's forgot talk about, about D Nice really quick because you want to talk about a parlay. That oh, he, parlay. he he made it work. That nigga parlayed. <laughs> I'm not mad like, at him. 
Like, I mean, he can say as much, he can say as much as you want that he was like doing gigs and whatnot, but he was nowhere. Nowhere to this near level. where he is. Uh, he was doing award shows. I know he was making money now because he posted that villa he just vacationed at. Oh, yeah. I've and that's that. the old, yeah. those pandemic <laughs> checks were happy. <laughs> yeah. I was like, man, yeah, he, he he made that thing work. And I'm like, I, I ain't got hate on him. I'm not going to hate him. I'm not mad that, at it either yeah. because I'm sure. 90% of people did not even know who D Nice was. Nope. Pre pandemic. Not, not a chance. <laughs> not a chance. So go black, brother. But the same thing <laughs> with the other guy. Um, I can't think of the other guy who did those things too. And he was he parlayed it into like the little segments on the BET award shows. Oh yeah, I forgot his name, but I know who you're talking about. Yeah, it's him. So a lot of music moments came out of the pandemic that are just done. Yeah, that, yeah, because yeah, versus is completely done. Um, I saw that they posted that they're going to try to like revamp it and bring it back, and I'm like, please don't. Yeah, like it's just over. accept that you had a run and it's over. So, do you have a music moment, sir? I don't. I, I really don't. I, okay. I, yeah, I don't. And and I think overall, like I was struggling with this year as a whole. Like there were there were moments, there were albums, but it's not like. It was not like one of those like remarkable years to me, at least. I would agree. Um, I would agree. Yeah. I sh- I was looking through like there were very few bodies of works that I revisited as a whole. Um, yeah. I'm, I might have jumped on certain songs. I will say my other music moment for the year, and then we're gonna move on. It was the fucking Usher residency. Oh yeah, because you went. That was fucking phenomenal. Like, um. Yeah, I think it was fucking phenomenal. And yeah, I haven't heard go, anybody say anything bad because yeah, every that time was, it's somebody different. Yeah, and I was I was fortunate. Like some people didn't get anybody. Um, but the night I went, Snoop Dogg came out. So mm-hmm. and I had never seen Snoop. So to see him for like 15 minutes was kind of dope. Um but yeah, so if you haven't gone, I saw he added some more shows for early 2023. But I would I would recommend uh, sure if you if you're heading out to Vegas. Which made me consider that I wish more artists would consider residencies and not go, wait and, go, go and not wait until they're Adele. old. So here's the thing, Adele. Damn, I see. You know, let's let's be honest. She she yeah. So you know that going, is somebody. Go ahead. Look, go ahead. I had gotten lucky and had the tickets in my cart, but again. I was just stunned that for three tickets, Adele was going to be nineteen hundred dollars. And these up were, there with the mic. Yeah, like she don't do shit. Yeah, it's nothing, nothing additional. I'm like, oh, bitch, I'll listen to your album because I will never pay that for her. Yeah. And so for, to, for I only paid like two fifty for Usher, and that was like, well, I'd pay it again. And I'm like, that bitch wanted six hundred dollars. She's out of her fucking mind. So. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> but go see Usher if you can. If you, he added new shows, I think um, the tickets are out. But go, 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 go. All right, let's go. What was your right, favorite? So going... Let's your favorite song. Let's start with the song. Do you have a favorite uh, song of the year? A- absolutely. So my favorite song um, is uh, "Roster" by Jasmine Sullivan. Um, ah. So. Again, I came very close to being like, you know, I had to finagle the rules and be like, uh, I could put this uh, hotels, motels on, but I couldn't do that because I just felt like that was not fair. Oh, mine is. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think that was fair to the authenticity of the list, but um, I probably... Well, I probably listened to that album. Well, that was my number one album of the year. On yeah, Spotify, last year I think we year. we agreed last year on that. Um, yeah. So here's what the thing is. Okay, I won't. I I'll put that as honorable mention for integrity purposes of the list. Okay. But I did have it. It was my it was my number yeah. five. <laughs> but I'll put honorable mention and I can swap. That's a good song. I really Jasmine did the damn thing, and I will say. For a deluxe album drop to add as many songs as she did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I thought it was quality. So that's a good pick. That's a good pick. My favorite song of the year came a little later. But the amount of times I've played this song <laughs> since it dropped. 
and I don't know if you pronounce how you pronounce this, but I'm gonna say I think um no worries her and Anderson Pack, the where I go. Mm. Yeah, good God, I can't stop playing that song. I really like that song. And that yeah. just dropped in like September, right? Or October. Yeah, I, I feel like they're prepping an album. I thought I saw Anderson say that. So um Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. I'm I don't excited. know if you've listened to their previous works, but it's, I did. it's worth it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. After the um after it popped up on one of my little Spotify lists, I said, like, wait a minute, what song is this? Brenda <laughs> and I ran it back. Yeah. Um, so spot, I will say credit Spotify. They did a good job this year for me in throwing in smaller, no name artists that I probably would not know, um, to my list. And for that, I think Spotify. So, all right, well, let's and go. Well, I already albums. said, I already said my honorable mention album. Do you have an honorable mention to go? I'll, right. <laughs> I'll move Jasmine. Yeah. You don't, all right. You, you move, move Jasmine. Move, all that's right. Fine. Number five, your number five most favorite album of 2022, go. Babyface Girls Night Out. I, so I'm like a. Oh, oh my God. I, I, how in sync are we? That's literally my number five. <laughs> 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 so like, I, yeah, I mean, I've, my aunt like was a diehard Babyface fan, like literally like any road like we would drive from here to florida and the only thing we would listen to was babyface the entire car ride so like <laughs> i have like somebody that i've like fully fully grown up on has been him but like to hear him kind of like revamp his sound work with newer artists but still have like that babyface authenticity to it i was like man this is like i didn't know what i was going to get from this um but I, I, you know, once he dropped the joint with LMA, I was like, okay, I think I know, I think it's gonna sound good. I think, I think we're gonna have something in here. And yeah, man, that that thing is outstanding. I would agree. I think I remember when I texted you because I had missed that this album came out, yeah. and I was like, yo, I kind of fuck with this. And what I liked, what you hit on was, I liked that he gave an album and gave baby face production writing all that shit to the young girls, mm-hmm. the Coco Joneses, the LMAs, Money Longs. Um, I really fucked with that album, so I ran it yeah. back. And it's funny, I really hope um, Coco Jones is somebody I have my eye on. I hope that whenever she does do a full project, I thought she just tried one. This, well, is that an EP or a full of album? Uh, I always be getting confused know. these days. Yeah, I did well, listen to that, but I'm just saying, like, I hope she can get Mr. Babyface and afford to write a check to get him to do no. some more <laughs> because <laughs> uh, Mr. Edmonds gave. I think I really liked her voice a lot more on his on the, his album than I did on some of her songs on that yeah, project yeah, yeah. she dropped. Yeah. So that's hilarious. We did the same number five. All right, number four. <laughs> uh, so I don't, the audience, it's all about the music. It's strictly here for the music. Um, sorry R. for Kelly? what I tore. No, oh. no, 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 no. <laughs> I didn't even get it. I didn't even get a full chance to get it to even uh, review the album. I got three I tracks just saw and the and was gone. Yeah, I just Jim saw the tweet. Gone. Okay, go uh, ahead. <laughs> uh, sorry for what by Tory Lanez. Um, Ooh, they gonna get you. <laughs> they gonna get me. They always get me. They always get me. And that's okay. Listen, I'm here for the music. So, Tory 2020, 2021, 2022 have dropped bangers. Like, like he makes amazing music. I don't know what he does in his personal life. <laughs> do you not he shoot people apparently <laughs> I, I do not know again there's a lot there's a lot of question marks i don't really know i'm not going there but um yeah no this the project is is fun good music good lyrics um yeah tori went on a, a three album run that i can't complain on so sorry so which tori one was to. his album where he had <laughs> He kind of remixed the songs 
and he had those folks come on. Was that just a, a throwaway album? I thought it was. I thought it was. Okay, well, that, that's probably the last full project of his I list to. Okay, the, yeah, that was. Oh, it was an album. It was his fourth album, 2019, 2019. Yeah. Um, I really, I did enjoy that album. That was pre-shooting incident. Yeah. Tori um, makes good music. But yeah, I, I interesting. I did, I did not listen to his album, but now I, I don't might... think a lot of people. That's the problem. I don't think a lot of people actually even listened to the album. Yeah, cause because you know you feel like if you listen to it, you know it would send an alert to Black Twitter that <laughs> <laughs> you're supporting an abuser. So I had to, you know, I wanted to outline that, you know, it had nothing to do with what this person may or may not have done. Um, okay. It was strictly about the music. So. All right. Kenny with a controversial <laughs> pick on. <laughs> um, so my number four, I picked, um, and I don't think this should be a surprise to anyone, but my number four is R&B Money by Tank. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like Tank has been one of those folks in um because this is his his last album, right? He said that's what he said. Because you know, everybody keeps saying this shit. But um, I feel like this gave it gave quintessential tank. He's been so consistent in delivering R and B bangers. Um, the songs that you put on your, your freak them down playlist, your get the drawers playlist tank has really successfully delivered his, uh, no limit with Alex Isley. I probably burnt that Mm. song into the ground. Jay Valentine, all of those. Um, so it made me feel lusty. Want to get ratchet. And you can always count on tank for that kind of album. Yes. yes. I feel like there's not, uh, there have not been many tank albums that have come out that have not been top on your list pretty yeah, regularly. I, I really do um, appreciate tank. I, I feel like also we don't, I don't think people know how much he's done for other people as well. Mm-hmm. Um, how much background vocals he's done writing and that stuff. You probably hear tanks voice more than most people know, but um, he's, yeah. I gotta say Tank don't really miss for me I think you his last yeah I'm like I would, this is how I feel now and never he did Sex Love and Pain 1 and 2 um, and now that his earlier albums that were with um, Black Ground are oh, finally on yeah I've been running those too so I think Tank has successfully from easily the last 10 12 years every album has been two yeah. thumbs up for me at least but yeah. um and, uh, sorry i you know i i know we only we only support the bony breakdown podcast but r&b money podcast oh quality music conversations i love speaking of, yeah i really do enjoy his podcast I, yeah and it's funny because i haven't been adding a lot of new podcasts into my rotation because it becomes mm-hmm. so much but yeah it's a lot that one i really enjoy that podcast Good job. Good plug. Yeah. All right. Number three. All right. Uh, number three for me is Lucky Day Candy Drip. Oh, that's a good one. Um, good modern R&B sound. Um, a little 70s flair in there a little bit. But I feel like he touches a lot on um, on different genres and kind of blends them together to give mm-hmm. kind of like a newer R&B sound. Um, yeah. And I, I mean, his voice, you can't. You can't really miss on that. So yeah, I, um, I liked that album a lot too. Um I definitely liked um what's the song over that he did with the music sample, music yes. soul child sample. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, no, I, I, fever, yes, yeah, some good some good tracks yeah, on there. That's a good one. I probably did not that's one of those albums where I enjoyed, I don't think I ran it all the way all the time, but I would go mm. hit different like, songs. Hit the ones that I liked. All right. Um, my number three is drum roll. No, um, PJ Morton, watch the sun, the deluxe edition. I'm going to say, and the reason why I <laughs> say the deluxe edition, I appreciate that he put out the instrumentals. I feel like 
remember when you used to get cassette You used to get that, yeah. You used used to get the instrumental. So I was really appreciative um, that he gave us some instrumentals on the deluxe album because I don't know, this is a boonie fun fact. When I need to concentrate, I either play (laughs) one of three things. Um, Classical, gospel, or um, like freak me music. Very weird to make me focus. (laughs) And but with his deluxe album, I was able to just play the instrumentals when I would want to focus, but not hear okay, okay, Joanna's Brahms because I love those symphonies. Um, yeah, so yeah, I really liked it, but I also did like the song him, PJ Morton, and JoJo. I don't know, every time they get a song together, I just need a duet album because that motherfucking song, I that's another (laughs) one I played into the ground. Um, so, yeah, and I feel like, too, I think it was shocking that people just found out that um, PJ Morton is in Maroon 5. <laughs> yeah, 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 I feel like this is like every like every year comes up and it's just like, hey, did you know it's a black guy in Maroon 5? <laughs> did you know that he makes his own music? <laughs> yeah. So when that, when, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, it went viral on Twitter again, like he's in Maroon 5. So, yeah, but no, yeah. really great album. If you haven't listened to it, he, he has some really good... Um, guest artists hop on to that but yeah so if you even checked it out pj morton's watch the sun yeah good on two, two all right um we gotta we gotta put it out there renaissance beyonce <laughs> it's there it's not my number one um i'm curious what your I'm, one is now i'm expecting that to be your number one but um <laughs> <laughs> that is my number two um Beyonce's best album. Um, Hands down. Um, yeah, it's not even close. Um, yeah, it, it hit in the car, it hit at home, it hit in your headphones, it, it worked. Yeah, it, um, it was cohesive, transitions were perfect, sounds were good. Um, yeah, it was, it's not too much bad I can say about this album. So, um, yeah. Sorry, you're going to have to keep this out. <laughs> Hi to the twins. <laughs> Look at uh, if you're on Patreon, you can see Kenny being the dad. Uh, <laughs> um, so I think I stopped talking about Renaissance. Are they okay. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yes, I I agree with your sentiments on Renaissance, but. My number two album is Robert Glasper's Black Radio 3, the Supreme Edition. You're going to be mad at me. So I have yet and still to fully get through that album yet. I have not gotten yes! fully through it. I know. I, have, I, I know I have it because I, I still have it written down. Yes, I am actually stunned. So... He released the the first version, but this goddamn deluxe edition, it is a Voyage to Atlantis remake with Alex Isley and Blau. My God. So trust me, I know that song. I'm well aware. I've heard that song <laughs> a, a lot. Indy Irie does a song, Hi. I cannot believe that song did not make my top songs on Spotify. That's why I know the algorithm is off on that little recap they do because it's a two minute bang. I have to play that song four times in a row every time I listen to it. Like it's just a, and it's such a different vibe for Indie Ari. Um, so I really fucked with that. But it's everybody's on this album Luke James, Estelle. It's even a Mac Miller feature. Um, so yeah. P- PJ Morton, Jennifer, it's actually a Jennifer Hudson song that I fucking like. I can't stand Jennifer Hudson's music. Um, no, no, I just interested. don't understand somebody <laughs> with such a beautiful voice who makes trash ass music. I, I just really don't understand what happened with Jennifer Hudson's musical music career. It's, it's quite astounding to me. But anywho, I digress. So yes, uh, to Kenny's point, the the Supreme Edition of Black Radio Three is quite lengthy because unlike most artists these days who give us a two minute and one second song. A lot of the songs on Robert Glasper's album are five, six, 
minute um, songs and um, it can get quite lengthy, except my fucking favorite song on the album with India Irie is two minutes and 24 seconds. I know it gets burned <laughs> in my brain because I literally play it eight, four times in a row. Um, so yes, that is number two. Okay. All right. So what's your, so, I'm curious, what is your number one? <laughs> so my number one, we brought this person up a couple of times um, throughout the, the episode so far. Uh, Alex Isley, Mary Gold. That that was another one I really did love. That one too. By far, a beautiful album. I like. I it's, to it is album stunning. So much, and she just she had a year that I am like. She had the tank joint. She had the joint with Robert Glasper. She had this. I'm like, man, like the album is just sonically. Yeah, beautiful. love Her again. Voice, oh. God, I love yeah. love again. And that's a, I think what she really did really well or whoever, who's that a guy on the Jack Dine? Jack Dine. What, yeah, Jack Dine. What they really did really well on this album, because even though it's only, it's less than 30 minutes, the whole thing. Yeah, it's very um, short. Yeah. But it, that's what I'm saying. Is it considered an EP? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I always get confused with the EP yeah. versus this, whatever. But what I think they really did, it's, it's, if you're going to do a short album, then all the motherfuckers got a hit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I think, I think the album maybe is 10 songs. Maybe if that all those fucking songs hit that, that is a really good one. Yeah. I, I, I love this album. Like by far, I would, I, again, I wanted to go see her perform, but then the resales, the resale. She went to about- Phil, yeah, the Fillmore, and then the resales got got a hand of it, and I was like, "Nah, I'm good." Yeah, I uh, I really wanted to see her as well because I really did enjoy that album, and like you said, everything that she's been on this year, top notch. Just flows, top-notch. yeah, yeah, top notch. She's got like it. She's got it. Just floating, yeah. She's got it. She really does. No, that's a good one. I I did like that one. Um, it's funny. She's written on my list, but I had I kept pushing. But she's a good one. So that yeah. you actually shocked me. Okay. Well, yeah. yeah. My number one is motherfucking Beyonce Renaissance. Um, <laughs> I was up with Black Twitter at 12 o'clock and listened with Black uh, Twitter. I was sleeping. And um, <laughs> <laughs> this was the first album of Beyonce's that as soon as I heard it, I was not one of those folks that had to grow on. I I literally was like, this is it. Yeah. This is fucking it. <laughs> like Kenny said, it's fucking cohesive. Um, it's the first project she's given us in a long time that stood without visuals. And I will go back and stand on this hill. I don't think Lemonade is as good of an album as people give it to be. It was bomb as fuck with the visual. She had an HBO special, but the, the album itself is not that good. So this is what I've been waiting for from Beyonce, an album that could stand without visuals. That was a classic, no skips. Now, my only gripe with it, though, I want to move Church Girl. Okay. Th- that's the only one for me where the sequencing, because then it goes right into plastic off the sofa. Yeah, so you're so like that's dropping a like one. a thotty, dropping yeah. like a thotty, yeah. and then, and it's, then like, it's like, I know you love, yeah, yeah I don't, me. yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, that's the only gripe I have. I don't know where I would put Church Girl because I've listened to it so it. many times. I don't. So I, I did not like it at first because I think the, my first listen was in the car. So I'm riding and I'm like, okay, this joint knocks, and then it like slows down. So I'm like, okay, I wasn't expecting it. But I think because I like was it plastic off the sofa mm-hmm. so much that shout I'm out to our girl stuck. Sid who we love yeah <laughs> yeah I'm like an, another album that like I love that like, album I, too yeah yeah couldn't put it on it but it's like dang the album. yeah anyway um I was just like I like this song so much that I don't care oh, who cares I, I'm, yeah yeah I let it go but it's like I want to move. Ch- I, I, I really want to move Church Girl somewhere else because you don't. But you can't. I don't know where to put it. But even if you moved it, even if you moved it, it wouldn't flow. Yeah, it's a tough one. 
Because, and I think why it fucks me up so bad is because cuffed energy and break my soul flow so flawlessly mm-hmm. that church girl is very, is a knee jerk, especially then to go into plastic off the sofa. That is literally my like only gripe. So the only way that I think about it is it's like a, it was meant for like a cassette. So like you would flip it, <laughs> you would flip it like you would have flipped it. You would have had a break to come had down a, to come down on it. But yeah, perhaps that's literally my only flaw. Of, uh, that's And that's just a personal gripe. I won't hold it against them, but I'm somebody I've played when I when I do Renaissance, I start with these motherfuckers ain't stopping me. Until mm-hmm. the the last part with Donna Summers, um, and I will hope to be at this concert. I don't want to see her talk about passengers on her plane. I don't want to hear her talk about single ladies. I don't want to hear nothing else. I literally want to go to the concert and just hear these motherfuckers not stopping me. And she just <laughs> does the whole album. That's all I want. I don't want to see shit else that she recycles from all the other fucking tours. Y'all could say the shit is different. It is not different. This is all I want to see. I know it's not going to happen, but I'm going to keep trying to talk it out there because here's the thing too. I think so much of us have forgotten. It's two more acts of this shit, which people have leaked out that it's an acoustic album and another duet album with Jay-Z, which I'm already upset about because I'm like, this is so good. I'm so fearful that whatever she does next will be such trash. She, she can't, she can't do that after this. Like, it needs to be within the same It has to be the same. Yeah, I just... So, yeah, I think we keep forgetting because I was also hoping that Act 2 was visuals, Act 3 was the tour, but they're saying that these two other acts are music. Like, why would I... I'm, why would I want to hear an acoustic album from her? I'm sorry. I like... Never. She's great. But I don't... Like, that's not anything that I want from her. She's high energy visual. How the fuck is she going to perform an acoustic album? That's silly. Yeah. They're just doing, they're just saying rubbish <sighs> now. This is ridiculous. But yes, you were right. That was my number one. I really tried not to make it number one. But I said, Adrian, you just got to be true to yourself because it's been knocking since the end of July for me. I yeah, have I taken mean, a, it... I have taken a break from it. I have not listened to the album in a couple of weeks now, um, because I was just like, you're, you come up off the crack pipe. Like, yeah. So. And I, so I, I thought that like by now that I would hate cuff it, but I don't, even though I hear it 70,000 times. Fucking a day. good song. It's I such hate, a good song. I hate that the internet picked that for a fucking challenge. Yeah. And then why the fuck can't y'all do the shit right? It's not that hard. <laughs> like all these videos. I think the most egregious one was that mother of the groom took her coat to, off yeah. like she was gonna fuck that shit up and hey have no rhythm. Yeah, Shaq Shaq did it last night, and I'm like, dog, like please, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. It's like I want to be the Grinch of the internet and be like, fuck cuff it. Yeah. But it's still such a fucking good it's, song. It's a good song. It's a yeah. So yeah, she she did her thing on this one finally. Um, so much so, this is the thing. This is so good that it's ruined a lot of other. Like like I said, I went back and ran her other albums. And everybody bigged up Lemonade. That shit is trash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I I know we ranked all the Beyonce albums a, yeah. a long time ago before While this one dropped. I would honestly put the Lion King one above Lemonade. Wow. <laughs> like, I just ran them all back, and I was like, Lemon- Lemonade don't knock without them visuals. Okay. But I think, I think we said that. I think we, we said that, though. We did. We, we did. did that this it's not her. Everybody said this was it. That, it, that was not it. When I, I would actually move Lemonade, because we did that before The Blackest King in this album. I would move lemonade down a little further actually now hmm. because i think we also it, yeah. yeah now that we've had time to sit with it and i think too because us spotify folks did not have access to that album for a while 
because she, uh, yes. she didn't put it on there. So when it finally dropped, I ran it like this shit is terrible. It did it. It, it was all over the place. Yeah, you gotta, you have to, you have to, put you have it to, together yeah. With the and I was just like, oh goodness, no. So I like the songs on there that I like, but as a piece of cohesive body of work, no. So that's it. Anybody yeah, that's you it. looking forward to next year music? Yeah, I mean, that's the hard part because you never know with these folks because nobody let you like it's all like surprise shit like it just comes out of nowhere it'll be like oh they've been working on something and then they drop it um so no nobody in particular um i just like i mean i like finding new people um i don't want to be like you know be one of those 40 year olds that like still listen to the same stuff like i can't get into (laughs) drill rap and all that shit but like i want I want the music and I feel like R&B is a good place. So, um, you know, I think, I think we're at a place where it's going to continue to keep growing. And, um, I think we're going to get some good music and it's going to be people that are going to pop up next year that we probably have never heard of this year. Um, and yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm, I, you know, I mean, clearly my answer is Rihanna. Um, that's, <laughs> it'll stay Rihanna until it drops. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, uh. But no, I, I do. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to think of who else. Perhaps. Um, I would like something from Jill because I was not fond of her last album mm-hmm. she gave us. Um, so I could say I could throw Jill out there. My two favorites. Okay. Jill and Rihanna. Um, yeah. But I am intrigued about some other new folk. I I know everybody always says R&B is dead, and I don't subscribe to that belief because it may not be. Yeah, I think it's a lot of great indie folk out there doing stuff because um, it's a lot of albums that I enjoyed them, but I wouldn't say they were my favorites. It was a few songs like Sergio. Let's look at Kenyon Dixon. I don't know if you've listened to his mm-hmm. shit yet. But, yeah, so I'm like, it's a lot of people out there doing work. Y'all just got to... They don't you have no money behind them. It, yeah. yeah, they don't have no money behind them. So you gotta go look for it. Yeah. So yeah, use your use your Spotify playlist. Link. Find the song, find the album. And I don't know about the other, like I've never used title. And I've used Apple Music whenever I would get like a little free, whatever. Somebody would give you a free yeah. three months. But I just feel like of the two, I just think Spotify does a better job of curating yes. stuff for you Spot, yes spotify curates better playlists um, um, um title i have not used probably since it started um mm-hmm. but i mean i'm shocked nobody has like like they need to consolidate these joints because i'm you know just close them down get some more resources into spotify because i mean maybe we're biased but that's the best platform I mean, bar none. And it's, yeah. I've tried to step away to go to others, but just the way it's curated and, and I tell people all the time, they be like, oh, how, you know, my mother, my mother does this the most. She'll get in the car and she'll be like, oh, what's this? You put this playlist together. And I'm like, no, it's my Spotify daily mix. Like, <laughs> and they give you six of them. So I usually have yeah. like two R&B, a gospel, an alternative, it may be a yeah. hip hop and then it's like a 90s one. <laughs> they know I love the 90s. <laughs> Those are usually my six. Then you get a new music playlist. You get, so they do so much curation of playlists that are targeted to you that is so good. Yeah. And I, I mean, I had Apple Music and Spotify for a while just because Apple Music had a lot more clean albums. But now Spotify has brought in. They've done a good more- job with that clean album so if i want to play a 90s hip-hop album in the car i can find the clean version and i don't have to worry about it with my kids so do you type in illmatic clean yep okay because i've been noticing like my (laughs) poor mama ratchet she didn't realize she got in the car with me one day and i was playing renaissance and she was like that's the words she was listening to the clean version, the clean yep, album. I got the, I, I got the clean version of that one too. <laughs> so anytime so, the album comes out, I'll look for that and then I'll save that version so that I'm able to find it and it's easy for me to just pull it up. That's smart, smart, smart. So yeah, 
Well, yeah, we're definitely biased to Spotify. You know, you can yeah. leave five stars for the Boonie Breakdown podcast on Spotify too and now, Spotify. like you can on Apple Podcasts. So, <laughs> <laughs> a little plug. But, uh, all right, Kenneth. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate much. you, as always, having me. Um, hope everybody has a happy new year. And, yes. Uh, Merry and Christmas. Uh, yeah, I'll get invited back maybe like next September. Um, <laughs> you know we're we're coming down from our responsible seas and we're gonna it's gonna, it's gonna get yeah, warm turn it up. It'll yeah be a, it'll be time yeah. to turn it back up <laughs> turn it up and <laughs> that's when i'm not around <laughs> <laughs> all right yo <laughs> all right bye all right that is it for this week's episode i want to thank the homie kg for coming on and discussing music i still swear he should do like a music sports news podcast i don't know how it works but i think you'd be really really dope at it again don't forget to support our sponsor for your wellness is your last chance to use the code boonie it expires december 31st 2022 i'll reach out to them and see if i can get another code for next year but the shit is bomb so i really really hope you guys take advantage before the code uh expires because i'm definitely going to re-up on a bottle or two Again, thank you all so much for supporting all throughout 2022. I'm excited to do some cool stuff and the same stuff um, in 2023, but you know how it is. We'll be in touch and talk about that shit later. And if you enjoyed this episode, I encourage you to listen and subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, YouTube, or any of your favorite apps. Don't forget to leave a review too. Five stars, five stars. You can just hear your review on a future episode. Follow us on all social media. Share the episode with those you love, those you you don't love those you fucking hate i don't make these pretty images for nothing okay have a dope ass week stay healthy safe and sane thank you for listening and remember the ratchet in me honors the ratchet in you until 2023 i hope everyone has a great happy and safe new year see you guys next year 